Hey everybody, this is Matt Crump, and I'd like to welcome you back to another episode of God's Got This Stories. And today is a, a really great moment we're going to have with a friend of mine, his name is David. And David has been through many things in his life, and he has some incredible stories he's going to share with you about that. But a moment that God really laid on his heart that I think is going to be very impactful for you to understand how to find hope when you may think there is no hope to be had. And there was an incredible situation that happened during a bad situation for David that didn't know about it until towards the end. And you're going to find out about what happened there in just a moment. A PhD. Possible PhD. That's if I get crazy. Wow. Yep. That's pretty massive. So what do you think you'd be able to do with a PhD? <clears throat> well, my goal is to teach at the Bible College. Um, I, I teach youth now at my church. Uh, I've been doing that for right at 10 years now. Um, and uh, I love that. Uh, I do feel like God is calling more, me more towards a professor role, and, and, and that would be kind of my realm for equipping the saints, mm -hmm. yeah, because we need people to be trained right. so that we can have those leaders go and train uh, the congregation, train the flock. And so I really feel like God is, is calling me to to enter, do more of like a professor role, education. Um, and I've actually uh, filled in a few times for, so actually several times, for uh, kind of my mentor at uh, Carolina College of Biblical Studies where I wow, graduated. Wow, be awesome to fill in for somebody who's your mentor. Yes, I, I filled in for my mentor multiple times. I can teach any of his classes. Amazing. Um, and so I've, I've subbed for him and uh, just got that itch for education and, and equipping the saints through the Bible college, the seminary. Um, I still love my youth, still going to teach youth, um, at least for the, the, the foreseeable future. Right. Uh, you always got to be open to what God wants you to do. Um, but, uh, yeah, I really just I enjoy education. I enjoy teaching. If you'd asked me uh, out of high school if I would have been doing education, I'd laughed at you. <laughs> uh, you know, I probably would have been like, yeah, you're crazy. I'm not teaching anybody. I'm going to, I'm going to make video games. Right. Uh, and then I saw how much math was involved in video games. And <laughs> Not so much. They all <laughs> went out the window. And right. So um, I really, I, I just love education. I love being able to equip um, leaders so that they can equip their congregations. And um, I've actually had the, the opportunity and the privilege to teach with guys like Dr. Norman Geisler, um, which I've learned specifically from him. Um, his son, David Geisler, I've met uh, Josh McDowell. Um, I've taught it... Uh, uh, several different apologetic conferences and things like that through my mentor Thomas McCuddy, and uh, it, it's just been God's blessed be, me. Yeah, that must be like a dream come true for things like that, right? It is, it is, and and it, it also forces you to kind of be on your game because when you are teaching the material that the person who is the keynote speaker came up with and right. that stuff, you they know, wrote they, they wrote the books <laughs> that you are now using their information and teaching their information. You kind of need to be on your A game. Right. Yeah. So it's, uh, with Dr. Geisler and, and, and several people that have worked with him, it's, it's almost like I'm a Star Wars fan. So it's almost like having Yoda standing there going, okay, it's your turn to teach, you know, now teach Padawan. And so right. it's, he would uh, say, turn yours is to teach. That's what he would <laughs> yeah, say. Yeah, that's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, that's amazing, David. That's, uh, that's pretty powerful how you've been able to live into that um, calling because uh, that, that is definitely not something you started out with. I know that no. for sure, <laughs> hanging out with you and knowing. I, I thought maybe you'd just love to hang out with a youth group or something like that, you know, become a youth pastor or whatnot. But that's pretty amazing how God can make us take a left turn, right? Right. He uses one thing to get us to another place. Yes, right? absolutely, all the time. <laughs> that's kind of that's important because that's where we're at today. Right. That's, uh, that's how God's got this really worked for me. He took one thing to put me to another place. I mean, I've been doing one thing for a long, long time. Uh-huh. Uh, cancer comes in my life. I'm moving in a different direction, right? Yep. So uh, in your case, uh, you didn't just get afflicted with a wheelchair when you were 19 years old or no. something like that. You've, you've been in the chair for quite some time. I know that story a bit, but can you share a little bit of that story with us? What's right. happened there? Yeah, I was, so I was born with a uh, birth defect called spina bifida. And basically what that is, it's a, uh, it's a neuro birth defect dealing with the brain, spinal cord. And um, in, in the womb, the spinal cord doesn't fully develop. And so a lot of times what it is, uh, the, spinal the spinal cord is actually protruding a lot of times out of the back. Um, and, and it just doesn't make the connection there because there's, there's a hole mm -hmm. where there should be spine. Right. And so um, with that came uh, a number of different things. I had uh, kidney problems, bladder issues. Uh, you know, um, I was born with club feet. 
Uh, my my so legs you do were a lot of dancing and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, something like club. that. Right. <laughs> so. <Club feet>. Here, <laughs> And so the the uh, my legs were drawn up, so I had to have surgeries to re, uh, to release that and uh, heal cords. Um, I, I tell people I've literally been cut up and put back together. Um, and when I say that, it's, that's not an exaggeration. Right. Um, I've been through probably 13, 15, something like that surgeries in my life. And uh, but I tell you what, it's really cool because. God put me in, in a location in Chattanooga, Tennessee when I was born. Erlanger Medical Center in Chattanooga was the number one hospital in the country for spina bifida research. Wow. God dropped us right there. Right place, right time. Yeah, absolutely. And so that in itself is a God's got this type of moment. Absolutely. That he just dropped us right in the perfect place that we needed to be. And Dad, Dad actually was a rec recruiter for the Army uh, in Tennessee. Um, and so uh, we were there in Chattanooga, and I was born there. And you know, I attribute them, uh, God using them, and also UNC Chapel Hill and their spina bifida clinic when we moved back here to North Carolina. My mom is originally from here. Um, and I attribute them to giving me the quality of life, or uh, working God working through them to allow me the quality of life that I have now. Um, and it, it truly is quality a life, God guys. thing. Interjection. Pause. That's that. <laughs> You see David in a chair, you think, oh, man, guy's in a chair, whatever. Uh, I've known David for a long time, and there is no one more outgoing than this guy. Right. <laughs> he rock climbs and does wilderness stuff and shoots and hunts. And, I mean, you do it all. Nothing, there's no limitation for you, right? You, you are a type of person that, that uh, what I love about you, and this will be another video, is that uh, you are a person of inspiration to share with people that they can do more. Folks that are in chairs as well, right? And folks that are, mm -hmm. are not even in a chair that have right. other excuses. And here you are saying, "Really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah." You know, a lot of people ask me, "Well, how do you stay so positive?" Well, one thing is, again, God put me in a in, in a particular uh, situation, and I, I, I fully believe that it was purposeful. You know, God doesn't do anything by accident, and so He put me in in this situation. I think for a reason to bring Him glory and to show people, look. Don't focus on what you can't do. Mm -hmm. It's not about what we can't do. It's about what we can do and what mm -hmm. God can do through us. Yeah. And, and and that's one of the things that I try to try to inspire um, just the people that I come in contact contact with every day, but also friends. Um, you know, I have several friends who are also uh, have spina bifida, and and some of them kind of have the same mindset, and then there's some that don't. That they're very you know they're very down and, and yeah. very negative, and 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 so I try to to just be an encouragement to them to look and look just because you're in this chair doesn't mean that you're helpless Life is that over. you can yeah exactly that you can't do anything you might have to do things a little different you, you might have to mm -hmm. adapt and overcome but isn't that what life is about anyway? It's adapting and overcoming you know, to the challenges you know that we we face on a daily basis. Mm, yeah. if, if we if we allow those things to defeat us, then we're not really going to be you know we're not going to be able to do anything. Yeah. And so you know if we're going to be effective in anything, uh, whether you know the, the daily just living out life or you know if God's got a specific task which He does for all of us, you know if we don't have that mindset, I'm going to face these challenges and deal with what I got to deal with to get this done then then we're just going to waste away and yeah. and and I refuse to, I refuse to do that I in my totally life. understand that drive and uh, while you're talking I'm thinking not that I wasn't listening but <laughs> I was thinking about something that um, there's no doubt that we're going to have different viewers that are going to watch this video and there's a lot of different thought processes and uh, one of those things that I consider to think of is uh, Many people would say, all right, David, so you're in a chair. So why did God make you be in a wheelchair? Why did God give you something to make you have a disease when that's not what the Bible says about us? Right. So, so why, why is something wrong with you? Why would God, who is a loving God, do this to you when he could get more glory out of you by being out of a wheelchair? Or getting healed from what you have, right? And showing everybody that you've got a testimony that, let's just say, I was healed and taken out of the wheelchair, right? And uh, I, and I would respond to that. You know, that's kind of a classic problem of evil type of of, of response. You know, people, you know, if, if these bad things happen in the world, how can there be a good God? And 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 I would I would I would tell them, look, 
Did God create the disease? No. We, God didn't create the disease. Right. We did that when we, when we chose to go against him. Correct. The thing that God did, though, was God created me as a person, the, the spirit that I have, the unique, um, I mean, the unique creation. Uniqueness yeah, the yes. uniqueness of, of me. There's no other David, you know, on the planet that's like, that's exactly like me. You know, and you, an example of that, you look at identical twins. I mean, on the outside, they look absolutely, you know, they might look almost exactly alike. It's the personality. It's who the person is, the spirit behind that, and uh, you know. And so God, God wasn't the one that created the the the, the birth defect. That's that exactly was right. sin. Yes, that was sin. He doesn't give us. He's not a child. He doesn't give us these things. Right. But there are situations that are permitted for right. reasons. Yes, but yeah, He allowed for this to to be part of my life because He knew, and He knew before I was even born. So. Yeah, so he, he allows certain things to happen in our lives to I, I fully believe to often test our faith. And and um I didn't I haven't always gone to church, but I've gone to church for as long as I can remember. My my parents uh were saved in nineteen eighty six and so and I was born in eighty two. So there's a few years where I didn't go to church, but I don't remember those years. Right. And so uh the only thing that I remember is, you know, is is God being a part of my life even before I accepted uh, Christ as my Savior. But wouldn't you say that your parents forced that on you and made you become a Christian and made you go to church so you believe what you believe because you were made to believe what you believe? No, that was a that was a totally uh, that was a thing that I loved. I loved going to church. Um, I met some incredible people there, and and they just really um, they came behind me and supported me in with the disability and with the with the challenges that I faced. God's really blessed me with a, a lot of really. Uh, really great people in my life um, that have been very supportive, um, and uh, yeah, it's just um, it's just cool yeah. to, to 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 be able to know people who are that much behind you. That they, I mean, I've I've never had anyone really kind of question when I said, "Hey, I want to do something." You know, nobody. I've never really faced that. You know, well, are you sure you can do that? Because you. I mean, if you feel like you can do it, go Let's for say, it. Let's go, right? And, and, so, and, and so, you know, but again, God allows these things, I think, in our lives to really test us. Are we going to trust Him or are we going to run from Him? The beauty of it and, and the loving part about it is God doesn't force us. Yeah. He gives us that choice to choose Him or reject Him. You always had a chance to, and a choice to be able to leave. I you did, were, right? exactly. And I had the opportunity to just be negative and, and just be down on everything. But I realized... There are people in this world that are a lot worse off than I am. Mm. And so um, why not use the, the unique challenges that I have to really bring glory to God and, and again, to show people that it doesn't matter if you've got some things that, that, that are challenging in your life. That's fine. Um, but, you know, how do we... It, it, the thing is, how do we respond to those challenges? You know, and I really feel like God was testing me. Okay, I've given you these, these challenges in your life. How are you going to respond? Are you going to rely on me? Or are you going to try to do that yourself? I can't sit here and tell you honestly that I didn't try to do things on my own. Right. But a lot of times when we try to do things on our own, we end up falling down and we bust our face and we realize, okay, God, all right, yeah, I should have just listened to you from the very beginning. So I've, I've fallen and busted my face. I've tried to do things my own way. Um, I have been known to be a little bit bullheaded. <laughs> Uh, if you ask my mom and dad, they would tell you a little bit hard-headed, you know. But um, again, it was it was you know God testing me. Look, I'm giving you challenges. How are you gonna How are you gonna deal with it? And uh, and I chose um, I chose to just give him the glory because I realized again that there are people that are far worse and far worse situations. Um, you know, even just in the United States, and we're not even talking about like third world countries. Right. And that's even worse. You know, and so there, there are people that are, that are in a lot worse shape than I am. Well, I think they also, in other countries, they learn to value things a little better than we Oh, yeah, the absolutely. <laughs> that's a whole other... Yeah, other that's story. a whole different video there, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, we're going a little bit uh, in time direction here. I want to refocus on some things. Um, I know that you had specifically, I gave you some thought processes before we, we got to do our video. So I don't want to take away from a moment that maybe you had something on your heart you wanted to share. Right. So I had asked you some questions prior about uh, identifying a God's got this moment in your life. And uh, through what we've already said, I don't know if that's already answered some of that for you. If there was something else you'd like to say, if there is, 
then what is that moment, that other place for you, besides the one we've already heard, Right. this moment you felt like, all right, this is when I really realized that that God was there. I had this aha, duh, God's got this, I give it to you kind of a moment. Right, and 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 so I could, I could tell you a number of those yeah. types of situations <laughs> in my life um, uh, because I, I have been through a lot just because of, of the challenges that I face. Um, but one that really, like, stuck with me um, was actually last summer. It happened last summer. So I've been a Christian since I was 13 years old. You know, I've kind of, again, I always, God's been a part of my life even before, um, even before I, I, I accepted him. He was still part of my life, and, right. and, and, and I had a general knowledge. Um, but, like, last year, uh, right around um, my sister's birthday, May 23rd, we were getting ready to go on vacation. Um, I had to go to Mana for a youth, one of my youth. She was graduating high school. Um, and so they had their commencement there. And I remember waking up that day, and I just had this really bad headache. And I couldn't figure out, you know, why the he- what the headache was, but I didn't think anything of it. I took some time and all, went to the graduation. Well, in the graduation, um, I got really cold, started getting the chills. Um, I knew I was fevered. I mean, I had, uh, had a fever going on. Um, but again, I was just trying to get through um, that graduation for my youth and, and just kind of and support her. And so, come back home uh, after that. Um, the the fever had subsided a little bit, um, and I thought maybe I was just coming down with summer cold. So we get in the car. We we, we leave to go to Kentucky. It's two day journey. We stop. Uh, my dad has to stop. And so the next day, again, some more fever. Not not as bad. Uh, the headache's gone, but I started getting some fever. Um, we got in that Wednesday because uh, we left on uh, left on a Monday. We got in that Wednesday. And um, uh, I slept that night. I remember getting up Thursday, and I wasn't feeling real good. So I told my mom, mom and dad went to Fort Knox for the commissary and everything. I told them to go ahead. I'm going to take a shower, just kind of hang out here. I'm not feeling good. Again, I still thought it was like a summer cold or right. something like that. Um, as I got in the shower, I looked down, and I realized my leg, my left leg, uh, below the knee was cherry red. And it was almost three times the size that it should be oh my swollen. Goodness. So, uh, and I, I noticed the redness actually was moving up my leg. I mean, you could see where it was up in, in my thigh. Right. And so I called Dad, and I was like, where are you? Uh-huh. He said, we're at the commissary. I said, we need to go to urgent care now. I think I have cellulitis. I've had cellulitis before, so when I was five years old. Um, I don't remember that, but I, you know, just from descriptions yes. that he uh, told me, I said, I think I got cellulitis. So he came home. He saw the leg. My aunt, who's a retired nurse, she saw the leg. She thought it was also cellulitis. So I went to the urgent care. Long story short, they sent us to the hospital. We were in the ER. So I remember they wanted to do an ultrasound. They did an ultrasound to make sure that it wasn't a blood clot, just to make sure. Yes. Um, and I was in the ER, and the guy was, you know, the, the ER doctor was kind of looking at looking at me you know, after the tests and everything. And my doctor that they had uh, they had decided to admit it admit me into the hospital, and my doctor who was going to be there, his name was uh, uh, Doctor Ali. He comes up to the table and he says, "David," he looks at my leg. He says, "You know what? Don't don't worry about it, Mr. Probus. David, you're going to be all right. God's going to take care of you." Now immediately, I li- listened to his last name, Ali. Yes. I realized this guy is a Muslim. Yes. I, I've had some training with, with Islam. And I kind of know what they believe. As soon as I saw his last name and heard his last name, I was like, this guy's a Muslim. But he says, don't worry, Mr. Probus. God's going to take care of you. Now, even though he was a Muslim, his statement was still true. Absolutely. That God was going to take care of me. And so uh, they admitted me to the hospital. And he would come in uh, a certain time, right around 10 o'clock in the morning, uh, I was in the hospital for four and a half days, and he would come in every morning about 10 o'clock, check the leg, and we would talk, just kind of explain, or, you know, kind of uh, talk pleasantries and, and, and how you doing, you know, and right. we'd talk a little bit, chit-chat. Um, but immediately, I'm trusting this, this doctor with my life because at that point, I thought I was going to lose my leg. That's how bad the, uh, infection. the infection was. They, they had me on uh, the third, I think it was one of the third strongest antibiotic that you could have. And I got that every 12 hours. Um, they were dropping a nuclear bomb on me. <laughs> uh, and, and so when I was trusting this guy with my life. Um, so we talk over the next few days. Sunday rolls around. 
Dad hasn't seen my grandmother because he's been at the hospital with me. I said, Dad, go to church with me, Ma. I'm going to be fine. They got me. You know, if, if, if I need to text you or call you, I can text you or call you. I said, go. Go to church with her. I'll be fine. Right. Breakfast is coming. <laughs> I'm just going to chill right here in the yeah. bed. <laughs> and so, uh, I'm not going anywhere. Dude. Right. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> and so uh, while he was gone, Dr. Ali comes in. And I just got this overwhelming kind of feeling, hey, talk to him. And, and again, like I said, because of, because of CCBS and because of my mentor, Thomas McCuddy, I've taken uh, some Islam classes. I know kind of what they believe. I've read the Quran. I know what it says, you right. know, things like that. So I said, okay, okay, God, I hear you. I hear you. So I struck a conversation up with this guy. And I said, Dr. Ali, I said, just curious. And I said, if you don't feel like you're comfortable enough to answer, that's fine. What do you believe? Now, I already knew kind of what he was going to say, but I just wanted to strike that conversation up with him. So we sat there, and we had a, 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 about a 10, 15-minute conversation, and he said, you know, he said, I'm not really that religious. I grew up in a Muslim home, but I'm not really that religious. He said, but in my 30 years of medical uh, practice, I've seen too much to realize that there has to be a God. Wow. We started talking, right. and I was able to, to, to kind of bridge the gap a little bit between him and I and where we are in our belief system, and we, we talk, started talking. And we you do find have, some common ground. Yeah, there's some common ground. They believe in a theistic God. We believe in a theistic God. It's a matter of who and, and you know, kind of the you know, details and stuff. That's right. And so I was able to build that rapport with him through the, the week, but then we were able to talk and, uh, and, and discuss, and it was a really cool conversation. Uh, we we uh, we came away. He shook hands. He gave me his card. He said, "I don't normally do this." He said, "But I'm gonna give you my card, and my email address." And he's like, "I want to continue those conversations." Oh wow! So I I still continue those conversations with him today oh, through email and um, and you know, but it was just it was a really cool thing that um, sitting in the ER, I was wondering, okay, God, why I'm on vacation. Why am I in this hospital? Right. Why does my leg look like it's about to explode? Right. You know, and and then he walks in and says, "Don't worry, Mr. Provost. Essentially, God's got this." Yes. I mean, that's that's pretty much what he said to that's me. That's right. And so I was like, "Okay, God." And as I as I realized, and I was going through there again, talking through him with him through the week, um, and then that moment hit to talk to him. I then realized, okay, God really does have this because. Yes, I had to suffer a little bit, which I did. Yeah. I suffered for the next month, even after I got out of the hospital, because of the antibiotics and all that, that goes with that. But I realized God had me in that particular position so that I could minister and build a relationship with a Muslim and that I now continue to have conversations with. And, and you know, do I know exactly that he's getting closer and closer to Christ? I don't know that for a certain, but at least I'm able to have these open conversations with this Muslim. That you never would have had. Yeah, nominal Muslim, but yeah, nor never would, would have had. Nor would he have had, probably. Right. Yeah, that's amazing. So uh, you answered a question I was going to ask just a moment ago. It's like, well, some people would say, well, Again, back to that whole God. Well, why would God, right? So why would God make you hurt so bad so you can see this guy? Why couldn't you meet him at Walmart? You know? Right, <laughs> yeah. But I think, obviously, because uh, the circumstances and situations led to an ear that would not have been available anywhere else but there. Yeah. So what you're telling me is, although that sucked horribly. Absolutely. You're <laughs> saying that you now say what that moment was for you was worth it. Absolutely worth it. And although some would also say, okay, David, so you talked to the guy, but you didn't convert him to be a Christian. Um, however, you're, you're content with the fact that you're able to start a conversation with someone who may never have had a conversation before. Right. Regardless of whether he's Muslim or not, because you, you did mention that he said that he wasn't religious. So in that aspect, for me, he's basically like most people that don't have a relationship with God. Right. Except that he had some four... Uh, no knowledge right. of the Muslim faith, Islamic faith. Yep, because uh, so, that's what he grew up in. That's right, so he knew that kind of. just like. So why would it be like some so-called Christians, you know, um, don't really have a relationship with God either, you know? So it's, it's all those things put together. Uh, so you're telling me, from what I'm hearing, that God's got this moment for you uh, wasn't uh, going to the hospital, wasn't all that kind of stuff. It, 
it really came like towards the end or after the hospital visit when you said, wow. Yeah. Probably when the guy gave you his card. Right. Well, yeah, yeah. God's got this moment, right? Absolutely. And when he gave me that card, it was like, okay, God, you've, you've allowed me to have the training that I do. You've allowed me and given me the tools that I need to, to reach out and actually talk and, and evangelize group, different other groups of people rather than just the people in the Bible Belt, you know, right, that right. We, we come in contact with every day. They, they absolutely need Jesus. Right. Don't don't miss him. Don't mishear me there. They absolutely need Jesus. Probably more difficult to reach than, than right. the doctor. <laughs> right. And so, but you know, especially in the in the climate of the world and everything, you know, the idea that a Christian and a Muslim can come together and have a cordial conversation and and, and literally not want to kill each other. Right. You know, and, and and have any hostility. That you know that that. In our society today, that is that astounds people. Oh yeah, you know, and and, and well, there's a misconception anyway. Right, most Muslims aren't that way anyway. Right, right, so, yeah, uh, most Muslims are you not. Can, you can have a com- they're nice people. You can have conversations. Right, with, well, you got extremes that we see on the news. Yeah, but like your doctor that you met and friends that I've met, we can have conversations. No right. problem. Yeah, and, and 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 so, but God had allowed me to have the certain tools that I needed so that I built that trust with Him because. I knew what he was. I knew when he said this thing about Islam or that thing about Islam. I knew what he was talking about because right. I had studied it. You understood. And it. and and it's one thing to ju- just talk to someone and fake like you know what they're talking about. Right. When you honestly know what you're talking about and you can communicate with them and, and they have that understanding, walls drop immediately. And so um, well, God he felt used like you me. Were, he, it made him receive you from a different process, uh, viewpoint because. He felt like you genuinely cared. Absolutely. Right? And so that's whether, where... Whether we're uh, in a situation like you are... Folks, there's a lot of flies out here today. Yes. <laughs> I'm like... Ah, flies and mosquitoes. <laughs> so uh, whether whether you're a Christian and you have gone to Bible college and studied all these things and you get the chance to talk to a, a guy who's a Muslim or, or not, whatever your thing would be, right? Some people's thing isn't that they go to Bible college. It could be that they're a great... Heating and air repair guy. Right. Could be that they're, uh, I don't know, a tree cutting guy, whatever. Right. Um, we all have our things, and we all have our opportunities. Right? Yes. A guy that comes to come cut down a tree by the yard, and I'm not a follower of Christ, perhaps there's an opportunity that we can meet somewhere in the middle because yes. I need something he has. Oh, anyway, it, it works that way, right? Yeah. So for you that day, it seemed as if everything that had been put in you, everything that you had hungered for, came together for a purpose and a reason that met this man. So I guess I would say it also, if if David Probus ended his life at that hospital after all this happened, everything that you've been created to do was able to be done through Dr. Ali. Yeah. Amazing, right? Yeah. And it, it what really if you didn't do it. What if you just sat in the hospital? I, I honestly feel like God, I would have missed an opportunity, yeah. and, and, and honestly, there would have been lots of rewards there, you know, because I, I wasn't obedient. Well, lots of rewards, meaning uh, I don't think you're the type of person that wants wants financial gain, but no, no, the rewards no. could be even Heaven. more for, well, for, for Dr. Ali. Right, yeah, and, and, and enriching his it. life, right. Absolutely, because even, even, you know, some people say, oh, you just want to make him be a Christian. Okay. No. Well, yeah. Yes, but, no. but I yeah. I think that it's the fact that to give him things that he can experience in his own life to say he feels life that he hasn't felt before. Yes. And that's a blessing. Why would you want to take that away from anybody? Right. Right? And he, right. he wanted that. Right. Why would he else talk to you, right? Yeah. So what a great moment to live into that. And the only way you can do it is by doing it, right? Yeah. When God gives you those opportunities, um, it's scary sometimes. Yeah. I can't say that I wasn't scared, even though I had the training. I, I can't say... What's he gonna say? You know, is he gonna just reject me? You know what? What? Uh, again, this guy is has my life essentially in his hand. He's treating Amazing, me. Yes. And so it's you know it was it was scary in the fact that you know I didn't know how I was gonna respond, but I realized that if I was not and I did not at least take the opportunity, that I would be missing number one a huge blessing for me, huge blessing for him, but also would have been disobedient to God because I knew I knew a hundred percent. As soon as I got that, you just get that feeling. Right. Here's an opportunity. You need to kick that door down. And uh, kick that door down. <laughs> so <laughs> At least with one leg. Right, right. <laughs> and so, you know, it was a matter of if I don't do this, then I'm being disobedient to God. And I don't want to do that. Right. 
uh, you know, uh, and so, um, yeah, it, and again, we, we still conversate today. We, I mean, it's, sometimes it's sporadic. His schedule is, is sure. tough. My schedule's tough. Um, but the fact that I'm, I'm being able, I'm, I'm being used, God is using me to invest in someone's life that, um, honestly, I'm, I don't know if I'll ever see, um, him come to Christ or whatever, you know, but I really feel like, you know, the fact that I can bless him, that I can give him encouragement, that um, that we can just you know have that conversation, have that just that friendship there, and and just be able to uh, encourage and, and enrich each other, um, that's enough blessing for me, you know. Um, uh, the par- Jesus tells a parable of the sower, you know, and it, if you try to till that that hard ground up, if you don't try to go after those thorns, you know, if you, if you don't try to reach those people, and 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 don't attempt to get them to the point where they're good soil then what what are you what are we doing right i mean you know we're supposed to be part of the great commission that's making disciples of all nations yes you have to evangelize people you have to and you know you have to encourage people you have to build that with people before you can ever make a disciple out of them and so um yeah it was just it was it was an awesome moment and it's it's cool to see a lot of times it's really hard to see things in front of us it's really hard to see you know kind of where god's at in the future but we look backwards and we can see his thumbprint all over we can see his thumbprint all over our lives Mm -hmm. and and that was more than a thumbprint i think he just put his whole hand (laughs) there's a whole handprint right there he's like i got this yeah and so um i've got this yeah i got this Mm -hmm. you know and and so um that was just uh such an awesome moment and and series of events for me even though it was it was in the midst of uh, some suffering, sometimes we have to suffer. Though yeah. Jesus suffered for us, absolutely. We need to expect that suffering. It's so. going to happen. Yep, and that's what we do with it, right? That's right. I feel you. I know exactly. Yes, what you're you do. About. And uh, and I'm sure there's many of you out there that can can identify with that as well. Um, maybe you're suffering now. Uh, it could be hopelessness, anger, frustration. Uh, I mean, just like we said before, it's not that we don't want you to know Christ. We do. Right. That's not going to lie. Nothing hidden there. Uh, but what's really important, like David has an opportunity to have uh, with this doctor, is what Jesus did with everybody as well. Uh, there is something important and special about a relationship. Yes. And if you don't have a relationship, what's the point? Right. Unless people know who you really are and what you really are and that you really care and you're genuine, it doesn't make a difference. So, That's right. Um, although we may not see the fruits of some of those things occur to, in our eyes, uh, the seed, as he mentioned, is being planted. And the bonus is he's got a relationship with somebody who's an awesome guy. Yes. He's out there saving lives. I yes. Mean, how cool is that, right? So He's been doing it for 30 years. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. So, you know, it's just a matter of saying yes. And uh, you may have lots of obstacles and issues and problems that are in your way. Uh, well, here he is. <laughs> you know, he's got a great obstacle. I've got a my bit. own. A little bit. A bit. Uh, but his obstacle uh, is not something that stops him from going. Right. He just has to learn how to go around it. And uh, there's ways to do that, folks. And I just want to encourage you that there is hope, there is life, there is freedom for you. Yes. That you may not be able to see right now. So maybe it's just a, a directional change, something for you to be able to move in a different space, different direction. So maybe there's something that David shared with you today in his story. His God's got this moment. His place was a place where he felt like, a, wow, I need to really, this is my time. This is my chance. This is where I'm going to go for it. I'm going to do it. Everything I've been through, everything I've experienced right now is my moment. That's when he said yes. And, and some amazing things happened. Yeah. Uh, so the big thing for you today, maybe what God's trying to say to you is just say yes. Just go for it. And don't worry. He said he's a little scared. And there's times that things can be scary. Oh, yes. It's, it's, it's going to happen. <laughs> but but if you say yes, it's amazing how things can, can fuel the yes yeah. when we say it and how God can really move. And really, it's all about God anyway. God was the one who's trying to reach Dr. Ali the whole time. Absolutely. And you're just a piece of the puzzle that God used, right? Yep. <laughs> and uh, thank God you did. You responded. Uh, God would have had to find another David somewhere else yep. and, and use them. You know, could have been a year, two years, five years. Who knows? He would have. I mean, you know, he, he would have. somebody, no doubt. But, uh, <laughs> but David said yes. And now yes. Dr. Ali's closer to what God wants in his life than he ever had been before. Yes. Um, so that could be you in many different aspects. You could be the Dr. Ali or you might be David. And uh, you have to decide which one of those people you are and say yes. That's all it comes down to. So whatever your circumstance, as I mentioned before, whatever your circumstance, whatever situation, um, 
there is a place for you. And yes, you can say God's got this. And we can come up with every excuse you could possibly think of. Here's one. So either you're going to use this as a crutch. Yep. <laughs> no pun intended. No pun intended. Uh, <laughs> or you're going to take what you have and say, I'm going to go for it. And that's what this man does. Uh, and that's what you can do. So I just want to encourage you today to be able to say yes, to know that there's more for you. There is a hope. And David, if you could say something to that person in a minute or less, what would you say? I would say uh, don't get discouraged. Uh, life is full of challenges. Um, but we, you are beautifully and wonderfully made. And uh, God loves you. And he can use you. You just have to be willing to say yes, like Matt said. Mm. And, and so say yes. Take that opportunity to, to be uh, an active part of what God has for you in your life. That's fantastic. So guys, that's, good. that's a great word. Uh, again, thank you so much for being with us today. We do God's Got This Stories. You'll find it every Wednesday here on our YouTube channel. And uh, you can get to that through godsgotthis.love. Uh, you can subscribe to our uh, mailing list. And we have a magazine that comes out called Hope Revealed every Monday. Uh, again, you can get that at godsgotthis.love. All the links to everything we have is available there. Uh, obviously, if you're watching this on YouTube right now, you know where we're at. So uh, yep. <laughs> we're right there. So just kind of subscribe to this, please. And when you subscribe now, YouTube has this new thing. They've got this, this little bell next to subscribe. Yeah. So you can click subscribe now, and that just makes you on my list, and you have me saved. But every time I have a new video, you won't know about it unless you click that bell. So when you click that bell, every time a new God's Got This Story comes out, it'll come right to you and you'll know that you have it. So we'd love for you to be able to hear these stories and share them as well, please. Uh, the benefit of sharing this story is to be able to let other people understand what you're understanding and seeing today as well. So please take a moment to share this moment with other people as well. And uh, at the end of the day, the most important thing we want you to understand is there's hope through Christ. Yes. And the only way you can get there is through a relationship with him, just like we talked about today. And maybe that relationship doesn't happen in five seconds. It might take some time, like we all do. Yep. Like, barely you go out on a date <laughs> and you say, let's get married right now. Right. We just sat down yeah. for water. Let's, <laughs> get, let's get food first. Right, let's eat, right? <laughs> so it, it may come that way. However, there is an opportunity for relationship. Yes. And I can't express how much God loves you, how much he wants to have that relationship with you. Or in that relationship, how he wants you to experience life. Because there's a big difference between just existing because David could live in a chair for the rest of his life. Absolutely. And be fine. Yep. Or he could have an abundant life and do some rock climbing and, and doing some different things in life and enjoy the things he loves to do, have his gun and go shoot, whatever. He does things that he enjoys to do because he, he enjoys life. You can too. That's no right. No matter what you face, remember, God's got this.